Okay, so now we're gonna talk about uh, classes of symmetry operations in detail. And so previously we used a pretty hand wavy or imprecise definition of how to um, group the symmetry operations into different classes. We said that the identity and the inversion uh, operations are always in a class by themselves, and that's true. Uh, but then we just said, you know, hey, if you have two symmetry operations that sort of feel the same, like both of them are mirror planes, both of them in our uh, rotations, go ahead and put those in the same uh, class. That turns out to not be 100% true. And so what we're going to do in this video is uh, go over a mathematical relationship that shows, uh, shows us whether or not uh, two symmetry operations should be in the same class. And obviously this is very important for uh, coming up with the total structure of the character table. And so uh, just, just a, a note here, I will not be expecting you to know the information in this video for the exam, i.e. the mathematical proof of uh, putting two symmetry operations in the same class. However, you will need to use this information for the homework. Um, I do have a character derivation problem that will be on the exam. Um, you won't need to, to use this um, information for the exam. I will expect you to use our imprecise hand wavy definition uh, to get along just fine, and I won't give you any trick ones on the exam. But on the homework, there's another uh, derivation problem. And for that one, I expect you to be able to show, using what we're gonna go over right now, uh, why the different symmetry elements are in the same or in different classes, okay? And so where th this gets a little tricky and where your, our intuition can kind of break down um, is shown here. And so consider, for example, uh, the C4 point group uh, and its character table shown on top, and then the C4V point group and its character table shown on the bottom. These are very similar point groups. The only difference is that C4V has mirror planes. Um, so you'll see it has these two sigma Vs and uh, two sigma Ds. C4 uh, doesn't, okay? And so uh, this is a very peculiar thing. You'll see that for C4, the C4 operation, the C4 point group, for C4, the C4 operation is in a separate class from C4-3. Now what is C4-3 or C4 cubed? That C4 times C4 times C4. That means you've done a C4 three times. So you've done a 90 degree rotation followed by a 90 degrees clockwise rotation followed by the 90 degrees clock, clockwise rotation. In other words, you've done a 270 degree rotation um, or a 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise rotation. Those two symmetry operations, according to our hand wavy imprecise kind of feeling about things, they feel the same, right? One just is counterclockwise, the other is, is clockwise. But uh, in this point group, C4, you can see they're in separate classes, okay? But in C4V, look, they're grouped together. There's two C4s, one of those is a C4 operation, the other one is a C4 cubed operation. So that is very interesting. And you'll notice also the C2. C2 is in both the C4 and C4V, those are in its own class. And you could maybe envision that being uh, grouped also with the C4. In fact, that C2 is just doing a C4 twice, right? So it's a C4 squared, it's 180 degree um, rotation. So how do we do all this? This is the mathematical definition. Two operations belong to the same class when one may be replaced by the other in a new coordinate system which is accessible by a symmetry operation. So like a lot of uh, concepts in math, it's always best to see an example. So let's go through an example. The crux of this definition has to do with different uh, Cartesian coordinate systems, okay? And whether or not you can interconvert them. So I draw, I've drawn here two different uh, x, y coordinate systems. One is sort of your standard X going along the left, right, and Y going on up, down. But now consider just changing that where you have Y going on left, right, and an X going on up, down. It's just switched X and Y definitions. That's totally valid, valid mathematically, and we can do that, okay? And we're gonna check now 
to see if in C4V, they are uh, the C4 and the C4-3 operations, we're gonna see, evaluate, whether or not these two operations, C4 and C4 cubed, are they in the same class? And we know from the character table that we just went over, right, they are in the same class for C4V. Let's see if we can use this definition to uh, get that same answer. So here are our two coordinate systems. And so what are we gonna do? We are going to uh, take the X and Y vectors and we are going to, which is another way is any arbitrary X, Y point, and we are going to see how the different operations, the two different operations are translated, okay? So first we're gonna do a C4, and remember this is a C4 on the Z. So we're spinning this coordinate system um, 90 degrees. That's what C4 is gonna do. So this X vector is gonna spin down 90 degrees clockwise and go into this negative Y position. So we had a, a, an X vector and that went in to a negative Y. So X went to negative Y. And if we evaluate what's gonna to happen to Y, Y if we spin it 90 degrees, Y is gonna rotate 90 degrees and it's gonna turn into X. Um, just to be really clear about that, you know, you had uh, an X vector here, right? And that got spun into a new vector that is negative Y. So that's why our X here went to our negative Y. And then um, for our, our other Y vector, which we can evaluate, right? The Y vector, imagine it's just a little vector there. And when that got spun 90 degrees, right? Got spun 90 degrees, that went into X. So Y went into X. So you can follow this logic um, through the whole way. And so let's now do that for the C4-3. C4-3 is a 270 degree rotation, right? C4 followed by C4 followed by C4. So we had our X vector. That's gonna spin, spin, spin up. It spins into Y, X went to Y. And our Y vector, spin, spin, spin. Y went into negative X. So there we go. Okay, now we're gonna do the same game, but we're gonna do it with our other coordinate system, our alternate universe. So X. X here is where our Y used to be. We have an X vector that spins 90 degrees when we do a C4 into Y, X1 to Y. And Y was right here, Y vector, and that's gonna spin into negative X when we do a 90 degrees. So Y went to negative X, right? And now we're gonna do the same thing with C4, three. X vector here, spin, 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 became negative Y right there. Y vector, spin, 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 became X. And look what happens here. If you look at all this, our C4 in this Cartesian coordinate system took X, Y into negative Y and X, but our C4, three took X, Y into negative Y, X in this coordinate system. Those are equivalent. Here we had X, Y went to Y to comma negative X in C4, three. And in C4, we had X, Y went to Y comma negative X, same thing. So these, two um, symmetry operations can give the same results if you just change the Cartesian coordinate system, if you change how you define the co Cartesian coordinate system. Now, part of this definition is that, so that satisfies this part. Two operations belong to the same class when one might be replaced by the other in a new coordinate system. That's what we did. But the new coordinate system that you define has to be accessible by a symmetry operation in the point group, okay? So we have to be able to convert from this coordinate system to this coordinate system in order for these two symmetry elements to be in the same class. We have to have a symmetry element that can convert these two Cartesian coordinate systems. What is that symmetry element? It's a sigma d, right? It's a diagonal mirror plane. A diagonal mirror plane, what does that do? if you had a Y vector here, right? I'm gonna draw uh, in, a, in, a, in a different color here. If you had a Y vector here and you have a mirror plane, now that's gonna get flipped in the mirror plane and go here. Uh, and similarly, the, the X vector is gonna go to Y. So Y went to X, X went to Y. That's exactly what happened here. Y went to X, X went to Y. So we do have the Sigma D that allows us to interconvert between these two symmetry operations. 
and we showed that they're equivalent. So this means that in C4V, C4 symmetry operation and C4-3 are in the same class. And just to really emphasize it here, that's why we have a two in front of here. They're in the same class that contains, this class contains C4 symmetry elevation, 90 degree rotation, and the C4-3, the 270 degree rotation. So um, now think about the case for C4. All this math would be the same, but the problem is, in C4 point group, there is no sigma d, right? We said that that was one of the differences, is that there's no mirror plane. There's no sigma d. There's a sigma d in C4v, but up here, there's no sigma d. So there's no sigma d in C4. So these two different Cartesian coordinate systems are not interconvertible by any symmetry operation. All we have are E, C4, C2, and C4, 3. And you can't get from here to here, these two coordinate systems, just by rotations or identity. And because of that, it's telling you C4 and C4-3 have to be in different classes. Okay? That's what this is saying right there. So that's why um, in our C4 character table, C4 and C4-3 are in different classes. So again, um, this is pretty in-depth mathematical analysis. I only expect you to do this on the, that one homework problem um, for the exam. Just use your intuition. You know, I'm not going to give you a tricky one like the C4 point group. It's going to be more like the C4V point group where the two rotations are in the same uh, class as you would kind of, your intuition would, um, would expect. So if you have questions on this, you know, I'm happy to go through other examples with you um, during our, our in-class time. Um, but, you know, my, my general point is, you know, don't worry about this too much.